following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Today we're going to start the lecture, The Four States of Consciousness. Uh, before uh, entering into the subject, we have to give an explanation about uh, the consciousness. Because there are, there are a lot of people that confuse the consciousness with the spirit. And uh, we have to understand that the spirit is not the consciousness, and the consciousness is not the spirit. The spirit is, of course, the being, our real being, our real entity, our real uh, self. And the consciousness is part of the being. In other words, you are a spirit, and you have a consciousness. The consciousness is the same soul that we talk in other lectures. So use, uh, we use uh, soul, consciousness, or essence for the same thing. So these uh, are parts of the being, and the being is. In other words, the being, the spirit, has to build a consciousness in order to acquire knowledge in relation with experience that we have in different places or levels of, uh, of the being. From that point of view, related with the law of uh, evolution and involution, you might understand that the consciousness, the essence, is evolving from the mineral to the human kingdom. So it's obvious that that consciousness is growing, it's evolving, and it's acquiring different type of experiences that are passing into the being and the being becomes master or becomes with knowledge thanks to the uh, experience that he is acquiring through the consciousness that he has. That's why we state that we have to awake consciousness, which means we have to acquire all of the knowledge of the universe. And remember that I told you in other lectures that the monad uh, had to acquire paramartha, which means absolute knowledge and that uh, absolute knowledge is acquired through the consciousness that the being has to build when it is in the screen of creation. From that point of view we have to understand that the consciousness is the son of the being. And that's why we say that the being, Atman, the ineffable, the spirit, has to solve or two types of consciousness. The divine or cosmic consciousness related with that thing which is beyond the three-dimensional world, beyond the mind and the willpower. We find the divine consciousness of the being related with the different development in the higher dimensions. But we have the human soul, which is that soul or consciousness related with the evolution of the human being in the universe. That consciousness that give us the knowledge related with a human person, with a lower level of the being. So the consciousness is that uh, entity, we can say, or thing, 
that give us the power to transform the different impressions that comes into ourselves in order to comprehend all of the impressions that are related with the existing things in the universe. So the consciousness is like a transformer. The element that helps us to comprehend and understand that which is around us in this dimension and also within us in the different higher dimensions. The being is divided in many parts and each part of the being has to awake consciousness, to awake in its own reality and to discover its own entity. In other words, the monad does not know itself. The monad has to awake consciousness in order to know in the different parts of it, its own entity. That is the reason why the monad comes into the screen of the universe, to the screen of the universe in order to discover its own entity. And in order to discover its own entity, have to, uh, it has to awake or to create consciousness to give us the capacity to understand our own reality. So when a monad creates a diamond soul or a diamond consciousness, it's because this monad is self-realized master that knows the reality of the universe. In other words, the reality of its own entity related with the universe. Remember that the man is a microcosm of the macrocosm. From that point of view, in relation with the self-realization of the being, in relation with the different type of monads and individuals that are living in this universe, we state that there are four states of consciousness. The four states of consciousness are named in uh, Greek names. Akasia, which means ignorance. Pistis, which means knowledge. Dianoia, which means review of beliefs. And Nous, which is, of course, illuminated mind or illuminated consciousness. The other explanation for this Akasia is dream. Pistis, which means uh, state of awareness. Dianoia, self-consciousness, and Nus, objective consciousness. It is obvious that uh, Akasia is a lower level of the consciousness. If we imagine the different levels of consciousness in relation with the fourth state of the consciousness, we see then a building or a house with four levels, four floors. In the first floor we find the first level which is Akasia the second level which is Pistis, the third Dianoia, and the fourth which is Nus. Commonly uh, people live in the first and the second floor of the house and it's pretty rare to find people living in the third and it is more even seldom to find people in the fourth floor. So the first floor is of course dream or the dreaming state which we are always in, uh, finding everywhere among humanity. What is the state of dreaming? or a dreaming state. Fascination or identification with the different uh, uh, impressions that we receive during the day or during the moment. In other words, when we do not understand the impression that we are receiving in the very moment when we are receiving it, when we are fascinated with that type of impression, we identify with it, we dream. If we understand in the very moment and comprehend in the very instant the type of impression that is entering into our consciousness, then that is to be in a state of awareness, which means in a state of peace. If you recall that uh, I told you in other lectures that the physical body is only a vehicle, a machine, through which we receive different type of impressions. In this uh, three-dimensional world, we need a vehicle in order to be in contact with the different physical objects, persons, animals, plants, etc. So this physical vehicle that we use in order to be in contact with the physical plane is of course the physical body. We as consciousness, as souls, we are of course living within the physical body. So we have to understand and to comprehend that the physical body is nothing but a vehicle, an instrument that we use. Unfortunately, people that are in the state of Akasha 
they are identified with the body, they do not even suspect that the body is only an instrument, that they, don't, they do not understand that they are living within the body. It is due to the, that the consciousness is so profoundly sleeping within ourselves. I mean, when we say that this is sleeping, it's not here and now, it's not awakened, or it's not awake. We have uh, in the physical body five senses, which are the common senses, the sight, the smell, the touch, the taste, and here, five senses. You know that these five senses are instruments through which we receive different type of impression. The sound through the ears, the light and color through the eyes, the different type of smell through the nose, the taste through the tongue, and the touch to our body, different part of our body. Uh, between parentheses, the most delicate uh, organ related with the sense of touch is a sexual organ. And this is something that we have to understand because it is the, the most delicate uh, instrument or organ in relation with the sense of touch. And of course, the whole body is related with the sense. But always when we uh, talk about the sense of touch, we uh, point the, the hands because we use the hands more in order to use the sense of touch. But I repeat, sexual organs are the most delicate organs in relation with the sense. So we receive, of course, uh, different impressions to the five senses. Those impressions are coming from the outside world, from other objects, which are, of course, physical objects. Remember that everything that exists always is in movement. Everything is in movement. It's impossible to find a living existing thing without movement. If one thing is without movement, it's because this thing is not existing. In the very deep of any living existing thing, you find always the motion. In, a, in anything that is in motion always emits sound, different type of sound. Emits uh, color, light hit in different levels. That is what we call in uh, atomic science uh, quantas. Remember the quantas? Quantas which are packages of energy which speed in different levels or different uh, velocities in relation to different types of matters. That's why uh, depending on the velocity of the quantas within different types of atoms is how we perceive the, that, that we call color, light, smell, etc., which is, of course, the pure energy related with that type of matter that we are looking at. When that impression or that vibration that comes from that different or that particular matter crash with our senses, then the, we find that that we call sensation. A sensation is a result of the crashing of the impressions or vibrations from the objects outside of our bodies with our senses. The result is that that we call transformation. But if we are not receiving those type of sensations with our consciousness, the result is that are entering mechanically and automatically. And the transformation is always performed in different ways without the intervention of our consciousness. So everywhere you see mechanically how the people receive and give impressions without the intervention of the consciousness of the soul. The result is that uh, we are, uh, our mind, in other words, which is related with the senses, becomes identified or fascinated with those uh, type of impressions, and that is dream. A dream is a type of matter or a type of desire which crystallizes and embattles the consciousness. A dream is something that is not a reality. What we call a reality? A reality is something that happens in this very moment and the consciousness is aware in this very instant of that phenomenon, of that reality. But when the consciousness is not aware of the reality of the present but is identified with the mind which is fascinated with the past or with dreams, then we are sleeping, we are dreaming consciously because our consciousness is not in the present, but is embattled into those dreams. 
the dreams, I repeat, are crystallizations of the different impressions that are entering and entered into our senses in the past and that we didn't comprehend them in the right moment. So, for instance, when we were performing the sexual act, in the very moment, the sensation, which is uh, between parentheses, the most delightful sensation that any being can receive in the sexual act. That's why he that transformed that type of sensation in the very moment is a master. But most of the people, when they are performing the sexual act, they identify with the sensation. They are fascinated with that type of sensation. The result is the creation of lust, which is a type of dream, which is fascinated with that type of sensation and creates desire. Desire of having the same sensation again. The result is that the lust is always desiring the, that, the, the same type of sensation. The mind, of course, is identified with the sex and then we create this desire of sexual act. The same we can say with pride, envy, in the different uh, types of impressions that we receive. When we are not in the present, I repeat, we are in the subconsciousness. What is the subconsciousness? Subconsciousness is a type of consciousness which is identified with the past, past impressions dreams that were unsatisfied and we are trying to satisfy through the activity of desire in our life. When we are desiring, we are dreaming. When we are dreaming, we are acting with the mind, with the ego. We are not acting with the consciousness. But the consciousness acts through the mind, the ego. So that's why we call the first state of the consciousness because even though that is not the consciousness itself but is acting is acting through the mind because it's a slave of the ego mm. so the consciousness is uh, acting according to the condition of that ego of that mind of the world so uh, we are not living in this very moment or in this very instant but we are always designed to satisfy the sensations of the past again because that gives a particular pleasure to the mind. So to be here and now is not to identify with the mind, because the mind always attracts, always takes the sensations. In the memory of the mind, it has always the desire of to experience the same thing, while the consciousness of the being is always here and now, living the moment, the instant, the reality of every instant without desiring anything from the past. So desire is dream, dream is ego, ego is mind. So that's why you find that a cash in relation with dreams is most related with the people when they are dreaming, physically. When the people go into the bed, sleep, something happens. The consciousness that was active in the body is now living the body. And because that consciousness isn't battling to the mind, to the ego, and to desire, dreams. The consciousness does not realize or does not realize that it's outside of the body. And it's just uh, projecting the different desires in the screen of the astral plane. Behold here how the dreams become to crystallize in our consciousness during the moment when the physical body is sleeping. First of all, we have to understand that during the moment when the physical body is uh, entering into the state of sleep, the vital body is starting to attract the astral light, because the physical body needs the astral light, which is the solar light that the light uh, that the sun left during the day, and is in the atmosphere. So the vital body, which is the superior part of the physical body, attracts that astral light, and when that astral light enters into the vital body and start to enter into the different systems of our physical body, that energy is, of course, pushing out the ego, the mind, in which the consciousness is in battle. And that's why we leave the physical body every night while the vital body is attracting the astral light, the solar light, learning to charge the body with solar energy. And uh, meanwhile, you know that the astral ego 
we, look, we, we cannot say the astral body because uh, very seldom uh, people have the astral body. We have ego, which is, of course, molecular and atomic. We live with the astral plane. So this ego with, within which the consciousness is in battle is united with the physical body, with the alpha corona cord, which is the silver cord. Uh, we have to remember it is not united with the um, umbilical cord, right? Because many uh, writers, they say that uh, you, the antakarana or silver cord is united the physical body with the ego through the umbilical cord or the navel, right? Here in this part. And it is not right. The antakarana is, of course, united with the left ventricle of the heart. That's why when we die, the heart stops of beating. Because the antakarana course is united with the physical body in the heart, not in the navel. So that uh, that cord of uh, energy extends until the infinite stretches and contracts at the same speed, right? This energy. While the consciousness is in the astral plane and battle into that mind, into that ego, into that type of desires, crystallizations of different impressions in the past, then the mind, the ego, starts to satisfy their his own desires projecting in the astral light a different type of desires and that is what we call dreams because the last of course is going to project the desire of having the sexual act and in the mental plane which is the astral plane the same plane the ego the mind projects different desires and crystallizes there with images which are of course taken from the same astral light and how and this is how the consciousness becomes identified with the same mind in having different type of dreams related with the different type of desire that we have within any type of ego is desire the type of dream that we have within that's why having 97 percent of ego it is obvious that we have a 97 percent of dreams and we are sleeping 97 percent the three percent of free consciousness is of course acting very seldom during the time where the physical body is left. So we have to state that uh, related with the five senses in the physical body, we have the five centers, the intellectual center, the motor center, the emotional center, the instinctive center, and the sexual center. It is obvious that all the impressions that we receive through the five senses are going directly into the five centers of the human machine in different directions, related to the different desires. So the mind, the ego, is always transforming the different type of impressions in the five centers, through the five senses. Enter to the five senses and be, uh, are transformed into the five centers. And the one that is doing that job is that bad secretary, which is the ego. Because it's not storaging the right impressions in the right centers. Impressions that have to be in the intellectual centers, they are put into the, into the sexual center. Impressions that have to be related with the emotional center, the ego is put into, in, into the intellectual center. So within our house, we have a mess because the bad secretary, which is the ego, which is not transforming the impressions in the right way, and that's why it's, it's creating a lot of mess, right? Rings. And we are not living the, the instant, the reality. We are just identified with something that is not reality which is the ego in the higher within, and that is the subconsciousness in relation with the past. Relating the five centers then, we have five types of dreams, or five types of desires, or five types of the transformations that the ego does through the five centers in a human machine. So when we are outside of the human machine of our physical vehicle, the ego is satisfying the different type of desires that the ego couldn't satisfy during the physical life or that during the physical hour when the ego was within the physical body. And uh, an example, we were, for instance, uh, being insulted by someone in the physical plane. But because this one was uh, huge and powerful than us, we were, of course, just humble and trying to be respected right, by this guy. But within us, we were trying to kill him, right? But we couldn't because we were, he was Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? 
But in the dream, the ego of anger is projecting Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he's on him and beating him and kicking him and killing him. And we are dreaming that we are killing Arnold, right? And we are capable to do it. But it's not Arnold that is in our dream. It's just the image of him that the ego of anger is projecting in order to satisfy a desire that was not satisfied in the physical plane. Always during the astral plane, we satisfy the different type of desires. We have intellectual dreams. When the, the ego is so identified with the intellect, we have emotional dreams, uh, motor dreams, which are related with habits, customs, everything related with emotion. Instinctive dreams, which are in relation with anger, fear, jealousy, etc. And the worst type of dreams are the sexual dreams, of course. So we have to understand and to comprehend always our dreams in order to discover the nature of our consciousness. But we have uh, two types of higher dreams, but we, we don't call them dreams because they are not projections of the mind, but we call them visions, because in reality our messages that our own particular being are sending to our consciousness in order to awaken. And those type of visions are, relation, are in relation with the intellectual superior center and the emotional superior center, which are centers not involved with the mind, with the ego. They are independent centers. They are related with the being. So that type of visions, I repeat, are warnings and different guidance that our particular being, a particular God, are given to us in order to know and in order to teach us how to be aware of the different type of dreams and dangers in which we are in battle. We need to awake consciousness, and in order to awake consciousness, we have to awake here in this physical plane. And for that, we have to be aware in a state of awareness. The state of peace is in a state of awareness. Is the state that we use when we are within the body. When we return from the astral plane, from our daily dreams, in the, in the world of dreams, we enter into the body, we awake, we awake, we open our eyes, and we say, oh, well, I am again in this physical plane. We wash our bodies, we eat, we take our breakfast, etc., and we go to our classes, school, or our work, or we have any type of accident. In the physical plane, we have to be in the state of pistis, which is the state of awareness. We have to know that we are within the body. But most of the time, we do not know that we are within the body. Most of the time, we are sleeping because the ego, the mind, is also projecting desires. And we are fulfilling desires. And we are not living the moment, the reality. State of awareness is uh, the state in which we have to be here and now, dealing with life, living the moment, or the philosophy of the moment. But because we have a lot of ego, we are so worried and identify with our bills that we, we want to do something tomorrow, what are we going to do for lunch at midday, what are we going to do with this thing the next month, and uh, we forget the reality. We are not always in the moment. So then we state that most of the people, in, instead of stay in the state of awareness during the physical time when the ego is within the body, they are in another state second state of Akasha. It's very seldom to find people uh, being in the state of awareness or the state of peace. Most of the people are always in the state of Akasha, a second state. Before the, the dream in the astral plane and they enter into the physical plane, they continue sleeping in the physical plane. And that's why we are not aware of different uh, phenomena and possible accidents that could happen during the day. When we perform and when we fulfill the dreams or desires of the mind in the astral plane, it's not dangerous. But when we fulfill those dreams and those desires in the physical plane, then it's dangerous. Because the different accidents and problems, tragedies of life are happening because we are sleeping in the physical plane. Because of the desire or the sleep or the dream of power, the United States is pushing hundreds and thousands of soldiers against uh, Saddam Hussein in Iraq because he is also dreaming with power. So that type of dream is dangerous because thousands of people will die because of that type of dream, for that type of desire. The ego, the mind, that wants to be powerful. We dream with the uh, desire of the attachment of, to, the, to the flag, to the country, etc. And we are 
build a different stupidity like dreams, desires, and we are involved in more mining, more mining, mining, more ego. While the reality is different, see for instance the bird, the cats, the dog, the animals, they don't have ego. They have mind, but they are not identified with the mind. They act by instinct because they are they accept the guidance of the monad by instinct. So they are of course living peaceful. But we are not accepting the guidance of the kind of, of the monad because we have the intellect. We are reasoning. So we are behaving with our mind and we forget our monad. We no longer act instinctively in relation with our monad. We are instinctively but in relation with our own mind, independently. The result is of course tragedy. When you see for instance therapy of the birds, they don't worry about anything. They go and they take any worm, they eat, or they go and if the nest is falling, so they go and pick another pieces of sticks and they make another nest, another tree. Right? What, what is the big deal? But we have the mind and we make a, a big deal of everything. The result is a mess in which we are living, which is a big dream. So we have to make the effort in order to be here and now in a state of awareness. And in order to be in a state of awareness, we have to remember that we are within the body, inside the body, and that the body is only a vehicle. And we have to be very careful observing the ego carefully, because the ego is a problem. Do not identify with the mind, with the ego, that wants to satisfy desires, dreams. Just do what you need to do in order to have shelter, food, and rest. Flow. And then everything is going to come to you because God knows that you need it. Your own God knows that you need it. The different problems uh, that we have in this life is not because God is unjust. It's because ego is creating those type of karmas. Now we have to deal with the karma because the mind created it. With the help of God we can kill that because he is wise. The ego is stupid. While we are in the state of awareness remembering that we are within the body and observing the ego and then we can do the effort in order to be in the state of the anoya. The state of the anoya is for those people that are in the state of awareness and make the effort to remember that they are within the body. So in those states of awareness we then awake the consciousness and then we have self-consciousness which is the consciousness related with three factors that you already know there are the three factors of object subject place object subject place others say object i mean subject object and location in order to say soul the the view of soul which is the sun right? in order to wait who is the subject remember that the subject is always ourselves the subject is the being is not the ego the part of the consciousness of the being is embattled into the ego. That's why the subject has to be divided in two in order to be awakened. The part that is the observer is the being. That's why when we say that we have to remember ourselves, is that part which is divine, the being, God within. And we, we pronounce the mantra Om, Om, Omnis, Ha, Untimo, Omnis, Omnis, Down, Intimate, Intimate. Omnis John Intimate is a mantra for remembering the God within each one of us. While we remember our intimate, we have to observe the ego, the mind. Remember that part of our consciousness is embattled into the mind, to the ego, into those dreams, desires. We have to be aware of ourselves. And knowing that the ego is acting always through the three brains, the intellectual brain, the emotional brain, and the motor, instinctive, sexual brain, so we have to be aware always of these three parts, mind, heart, and sex, mind, heart, and sex. By looking at those three brains, then we are observing ourselves. This is how we are in the state of the Noya. Remember our God and observing our ego. Observer and observe. And at the same time, we have to be aware of the objects around us. Everything that is always surrounding us in the state of the Anoya. To be aware of things, tables, chairs, plants, animals, state of awareness. You remember Kung Fu? For instance, that movie I was watching, it says, uh, oh, oh, do you realize that there's a grasshopper jumping there? And then the, the Kung Fu says, uh, you wonder about it. 
how do you know that it was a grasshopper jumping there? And then the answer of the master is, how? You don't know, right, that the grasshopper is there. Because you are asleep. Right? In other words, if you are in state of awareness, if you are in state of the anoya, you have to be aware of everything around you. Objects. All these an object that could come that could come if I'm driving in the in the rain here, right? And then you are in a state of awareness. If you are in a state of uh, awareness uh, in the Danoya way or state, you have to realize that uh, you have to be aware also of the place, of the location. So we have to do that effort. When we enter to the uh, awareness of the location or place, we have to understand that it's related with different dimensions. Because the consciousness, when it's in battle in the ego, and the ego is within the physical body, we are, of course, aware of the location of the place. But remember that when the ego leaves the body during the night, this house also exists in the astral plane. And you could be not right now in the astral plane receiving this lecture. But because your ego is always identified with the physical plane, you think that you are in the physical plane, right? So that location could be the astral plane right now. So you have to discover whether you are in the astral plane or in the physical plane. That's why you have to make an exercise after you reach the last factor, which is always place. Am I in the astral plane or the physical plane? Because many times it happens that we are uh, discussing or talking with people, or we are in our job, and then we awake in, the, in, the, in our bed and say, oh, I was dreaming with my boss, or I was dreaming with my mother. I was doing this and I didn't notice that it was the astral plane until I walked in this bed. So that's why we have to be accustomed to do the exercise always of subject, object, place, always. And at the end of when we reach the place, the location, we have to ask, am I in the astral plane or in the physical plane? In which plane am I? And to jump. If you cannot jump, and then try to pull finger because the molecular matter, which is the astral matter, is always elastic, plastic. It is not uh, hard like this matter. So you can pull your finger and be elastic. But you can, for instance, many times I do this in the astral plane, when I cannot jump. I always introduce my finger to the matter, to the chairs, to anything where uh, I am in the very moment, right? With the, with the strength, I push it like this. And when I do it with effort, and then shh, my finger is passing my hot knife in the butter. And then I realize, oh, this is the actual plane. Obviously, I do this in, in, in now, and I'm sure that I'm the physical plane. It's impossible. But in the actual plane, the matter is molecular. So you have to, you have a cat, for instance, you take the cat of the, of the tail of the cat and say, if I pull this tail and then it's going to stretch, it's going to be in the astral plane. <laughs> but if the cat meows and screams, it's going to be physical plane. <laughs> that is what we call the sense of discernment, right? Discernment. To discern always. That is to be aware when the consciousness is always acting. In terms of awareness, discerning. This is weird. And always acting with the consciousness. When you are inquiring with the consciousness, you are in a state of awareness. But if you are just accepting impressions, entering into yourself mechanically, automatically, you don't care, never will you awake. So we have to be here and remember that in order to awake, we have to awake in different planes. What is the, in relation with Kabbalah, the lower plane in which we are? Malkut. So we have the consciousness of Malkut. The consciousness of Malkut is related to the physical plane, the three-dimensional plane. If we are sleeping here in this Malkut, three-dimensional world, if we are sleeping here, how we expect to awake in the other plane? But if we are awakening here in this physical plane, Malkut, it's obvious that we are going to awake in the thought, thought, and the other worlds, right? And the consciousness is going to rise. So we have to accustom to awake the consciousness here and now, in the first plane, the first step of the ladder, here and now. The consciousness is the same one. Remember that we are always 16 hours. How many hours do you sleep every day? 8 to 9. Let's say 8. The day has 24 hours. 3 by 8, 24, right? It means that you are 16 hours in the physical plane and 8 hours outside of the physical body. During the 16 hours that you are within your body, you, you, if you are sleeping, it is obvious that the 8 hours is going to be the same thing. 
But if you do the effort to be awakened in these 16 hours I mean, within your physical, it's obvious that within the 8 hours, you will be also doing the same effort, because it's less hours. So do the exercise in order to be in a state of the annoyance. It's obvious that it's difficult, because we have 3% of consciousness, 3 and 97% in battle. That's why we have to do another practice if we want to be in the state of the annoyance. Meditation. Why? Because through the meditation, we make the subconsciousness conscious. We make the subconscious conscious. The subconsciousness is slipping. We have to awake the subconscious. In order to awaken it, we have to meditate in that. So when we analyze any type of ego which is related with desire, with dreams, with the subconsciousness, and then we disintegrate that ego in the way that you know already, and then that consciousness is awakening. So we have more consciousness free, we have more way to make the, the state of the annoyer easy and awakening, and awakening, and awakening. During the state of the annoyer of self-consciousness, while we are conquering that state, then we will have parts of news consciousness or objective consciousness in which we can investigate the mysteries of life and death while the physical body sleeps. Objective consciousness is the capacity to enter into different dimensions by will and to investigate in the world of Yesod, Hod, Netzam, Hebura, Tiferet, Chesed, even in the world of the Logos and even within the absolute objective consciousness, which is of course the consciousness of being here and now in all the planes and transforming all the impressions in the different planes, being aware of all the existing things in the universe. It is obvious that it is impossible to reach the state of Nus if we do not work with the fire of the Holy Ghost, if we do not work with the Kundalini. Kundalini, the fire of the Holy Ghost, is that type of electronic energy that puts our consciousness in a higher level, in the help that we need of the Lord, which is the Christ, the same Kundalini, in order to put our consciousness in different levels. The final goal is the state of Nus or noetic type of consciousness which is of course a master and that is the goal of our studies the master to reach the mastery in all of the levels of the universe but a magician is a priest which means a priest is uh, that uh, initiate that is capable to move and to handle all of the forces and elements of the universe by will and in order to do that, you need consciousness of those objects. If you cannot uh, perform power in the consciousness of a plant, how the plant is going to obey you? This objective consciousness, how you are capable to enter in the very heart of that tree and to command the consciousness of that tree to do what you want. When you know that that tree is related with the time padua or element, for instance, the air, so that element is in relation with the air. So you command that element. You said, elemental of this tree, I command you to command to attract the forces of the air in relation with the silk. Do it. So then you can create a storm. That is a real magician. Or you can say, let all the black clouds of this red storm here get out of the place. But you have to command the elementals related with that element which is in that moment acting. And for that you have to awake the consciousness in those objects or elements, which is objective consciousness, to have power within them. In order to awake complete uh, loose or objective consciousness, you have to be rid of ego. Right? And that link the ego. In order to acquire complete power in loose state. It's impossible to be in a loose state with the ego within. Yeah. because the ego is subconsciousness. Whether we have Eikasha or we have Nus, right? When we have the ego is because we have a lot of Eikasha still. So we have to annihilate completely Eikasha and Pistis from our nature and to build only the Anoya and Nus and then we reach the level of Master. It is obvious that the Anoya is related with directly with the consciousness, right? If the consciousness is related with the being and the being is related with the forces of the universe, the divine forces. So we are in that state, we are attracting the higher forces into our body. And that helps us. Right? While we are not in that state, and we are identified with the ego, and then the ego, which is related with the inferior dimensions, we want to attract those forces. And then we are going to be worse. Right? 
I don't know. Any type of work or practice that we perform that is uh, related with the awakening of the consciousness, remember that we have to perform it with the consciousness. It means there and now, here and now. Yeah. If we are meditating, remember your being. Sometimes in meditation we forget our being, we forget ourselves. And instead of meditating, we are identified with the different projections of the mind, of the ego. And if we think that we are meditating, and we think that we are identified with it. And this is something that always happens in, in relation with the lust. When we are meditating on lust, we have to remember and to pray, and we want to identify with the same zines of the lust that we are trying to comprehend. Because the ego is very subtle and very dangerous. Nightmares are type of uh, experiences in the infra dimension. That means the infra consciousness is another type of uh, of the mind in which we are not aware of it. Most of the subconsciousness we are aware that we have those type of egos, but the infra consciousness is that type of consciousness that we are not aware of it, and we don't even suspect that we have those type of. Uh, egos within. So sometimes when we are of course having nightmares, yeah, it's because the consciousness uh, descends into the infra dimensions and is having this type of experience. Consciousness, she is part of the being, she's free is afraid of that, right? Scared. But those things are our own creations. And the nightmares are experiencing in the abyss, in the in, in, in hell, right? in the infra dimensions of nature, related with our own particular infra consciousness. Egos, for instance, related with the infra dimensions of nature are egos with drug addiction, related with drugs, homosexuality, lesbianism. All those is are always the worst is relief infra dimension, right? Infra consciousness. Fear as well. Not all the fear in relation with the infra, but we have fear in relation with the subconsciousness as well, right? But the infra consciousness is the worst that we have. Is the most terrible things and sometimes when we are putting in activity our inferior centers without our will by accident eating for instance too late in the night we have a indigestion and they're putting an activity in the lower chakra there with the infra I mean in the UDC we have this type of nightmare To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah.